evening, everyone, and welcome to the Maryville University Hockey Center here in Chesterfield, Missouri. I'm Todd Panula alongside Chuck Krause, and we're here to bring you all of tonight's exciting MACHA Conference Tournament action between the Maryville Saints and the Illinois State Redbirds. Well, Chuck, we have an interesting situation here tonight. As Maryville comes in, they'll obviously be the home team in terms of playing in their own building, but in terms of the team on the scoreboard, they're technically the visitors. Yeah, what an odd thing, uh, like you said. So uh, the way the seating works and the way everything uh, kind of panned out, as far as on the score sheet, Maryville will be away. So Maryville, obviously, in their home building, they come out, they're going to be doing things like they normally do. They're going to come out of their same locker room. As far as we can tell, they're going to sit on their normal bench. So they're trying to keep things as normal as possible playing in their own building. Yeah, and that's what you got to do. I mean, when stuff like that's thrown at you, especially like we said the first game, Todd, uh, a new season. So uh, even though the score sheet says they're away, uh, in their heads, they're the home team. They're in their home barn. And uh, keep it as normal as possible, that's the way to go. So these two teams played each other earlier in the season. Maryville got the better of it then. But obviously, overall, uh, Iowa State, or excuse me, Illinois State comes out with the better record. They finished the regular season 28 and 1. That's 20 wins, 8 losses, 1 uh, overtime decision. Maryville, no slouches, though. They had a. a so-so year last year to say the least only two wins all year yeah they come out this year and they get 15 regular season wins 15 9 and 3 is their ultimate record during the regular season so they've had a heck of a turnaround but they're facing a very tough opponent in illinois state that really only didn't get one of the top two seeds based on win percentage yeah and uh when you go from a, a two win season to a 15 game season i mean you guys got to be happy so uh I, I know they're happy with their gameplay a lot of uh some guys that came down from d1 really stepped up uh jens juleson putting up a lot of points uh jim hunter on on the defense there so uh but yeah like you said uh a big opponent here uh against the redbirds and uh it, it will not won't be an easy task for maryville uh but on the flip side same with uh the redbirds i mean it's not going to be a, an easy task to take down maryville so obviously both of these teams have to focus on the defensive end a lot of goals scored between the two of them Maryville comes in with almost 120 regular season goals, 140 for the Illinois State Redbirds, and they have 23 different goal scorers. So you can't really just count on one guy that's up and down the lineup. Yeah, you can't look at one line and say, okay, guys, here's their big line. I mean, 23, man, that's that's crazy numbers. So you got to, it just goes to show, you really got to uh, take the whole team seriously and, and look at the whole team as they're going to do something. So we'll step aside very briefly for the national anthem, and when we come back, we'll have the puck drop between Maryville and Illinois State here at the MACHA Conference Tournament. Howie's Stretch Grip Tape is a self-adhering cushiony gauze for better grip at the end of your knob. It's spongy for maximized comfort and cushion on your gloves. Soft yet abrasive to ensure the best grip. Howie's Pro Grip Tape is self-adhering with no adhesive to create an all-around grip on your stick knob. It uses a thinner material than our stretch grip tape to create a coarse abrasive tack on your gloves. And it's used around the globe by professionals. In today's sports world, high quality video and accurate data are key elements for improving team results, player development, and fan engagement. Pixelot, the world's leading AI automated sports production company, provides an end to end video and data solution for fans, players, and coaches. Pixelot systems are installed around the world and produce thousands of live matches every day with customized live graphics ads, the color commentary, on, uh, and play-by-play. At the end of the game, our AI generates highlight reel, 100% automatically. Analysts and the coaching staff get video breakdowns and stats from VidSwap, Pixelot video analysis platform. Each game captured is automatically broken down by sports professionals on a video editing platform for in-depth analysis. The real-time game breakdowns from live video and official data include shot charts, heat maps, and detailed game, team, and player stats. 
The platform offers a variety of editing and self-coding tools so you can easily review plays and coach your team better both during and after the game. This all-in-one cost-effective solution also allows you to telestrate, tag, and add notes to each move and watch your upcoming opponent's matches on the video exchange platform. Pixelot produces and analyzes thousands of games every single day from over 130 leagues and tournaments around the globe. Join the AI revolution in sports. College hockey. It's more than just what school you play for. More than just another sweater you pull on. It's about focus, determination. Here's Demo. As we get set to drop the puck here on game number two out of three here at the Shanahan Senior Family Arena. It'll be the Maryville Saints against the Illinois State Redbirds. Your starting goaltenders for tonight's contest. For the quote unquote visitors, it'll be Scout Stalkup between the pipes for the Maryville Saints. He comes in with a final regular season record of 9 3 1 and 1, 2.78 goals against, and a save percentage of 0.911. He'll be countered by Jared Shadel who comes in at 5-3 with a 3.63 goals against and a .890 goals save percentage, excuse me. So statistically, Shadel can be had, as uh, can most of the Illinois State goaltenders, but they play a relatively similar style defensively to the Maryville Saints, so a lot of times... The goaltenders' statistics suffer because they don't allow a ton of shots. So we're underway with Maryville in the black with the red numbers, which are nearly impossible to see. So <laughs> let us know how you really thank, feel about thank the you to the Saints for choosing those. I love them. <laughs> and then you have the Illinois State Redbirds, who will be wearing the uh, white with the black and red trim. A lot easier to see, and they have names on them. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing that's. Uh, we, we give uh, the coaches for Maryville a little bit of stick about it, but uh, they, they go the, um, the old school Yankees route where it's like, oh, no names on it. It's all about the, the logo that's on the front. So the Saints end up with possession in the attacking zone. Juliuson has tied it up along the end wall as he's in a battle there. Trying to wrestle it away oh. from glass. They get it out in front. Good setup. But a save is made by Shadel. Just put it on net. Jens Juliusen was put one on early and then shot from the point. Shadel was able to glove down. So already two shots on goal from Maryville, 30 seconds into the period. So we were talking about it off the broadcast, but uh, the Saints really kind of need a good game from players like Jens Juliusen, who had a, a hot start to this season, but has gone a little bit cold here in the winter months. Yeah. Redbirds just feather one in on net and Stalk up will cover it up. Leads to a face off of the Redbirds, which was pretty much the intention as they cover Carey in behind the net. Feltz takes it away for the Saints, lobs one up into the neutral zone, kind of handcuffed Michael Lane there. He was able to get a piece of it to deny the zone exit for Kelly. Redbirds come in on the attack. Skating here is Carcerano. Centering pass. Nobody home. Shot in from Shadel. That's Drew Shadel. Similar to the last game where we've got uh, multiple last names here. Up the near side. Kelly brings it across the blue line and just filters it on around as he heads off on a change. Saints have it. Tied up and now into the slot. Block shot by Lane. That's what he's known for for this team. Obviously, he'll score a goal here and there, but despite playing in a forward position, he comes up with the block shots a lot. 
Diving play by the Maryville defender as they were able to push it over here to the near boards. Rink wide pass. They go tape to tape and then it's blocked by Keller, although that was not the intention. Scooped up into the air and it hit somebody who was trying to go off on a line change, so we'll have a center ice face off. So Todd, I would imagine you would uh, look for big games from senior scout Stell Cup, Matt Simon Selly as they don't want this to be their last game at the Hockey Center. The Redbirds fling it into the near side corner, chasing it down. Sam Braun popped over to the far side, but it escapes the blue line. Redbirds push the reset button back in their own end, looking for Camilleri. Ended up on goal, avoiding an icing call, and then the pocket was picked from behind. They get it back to the point. Alter, over, hip check, thrown, knocking the man off the puck. Ooh. As Lewis was taken out of play. Saints get it over the red line on the attack. As in comes Chiadini. He tried to chase it down on the dump and chase. Came up empty handed. Good stick lift from Keller, but he can't hold his own. Hunter plays it off the back of Barlow, takes a swipe and keeps it away from Camilleri. Now he comes in on his own. Shot deflected high off the end glass. Hunter will go off on a change. Redbirds trying to clear the zone. Simon Selly had it passed around him. In skates Richie Young. He'll take a wrister. That's off the side of the goal. Is getting a piece of it was Verdu. And Stall Cup will cover it up. Simon Selly, Julius on line here, Todd. Expect some big things from them. As we said, Juliusson's put up some big points this year. Hopefully he can do the same thing here this evening. Saints pop it onto center ice. Lost control of it below the goal line. Redbirds have it as Gilbert looks to go north. Pops it up into the middle and almost getting it past. As they had set it up there for Trevor Barrett. Back the other way comes Juliuson. He finds a little bit of space. Score! From the left side of the slot, the wrister comes back to the blocker side, and Juliuson has made it one to nothing. We say his name, and he answers Todd. Jens Juliuson breaking into the zone, down the near side, into the middle. Wrist shot far side, beats the goaltender, goaltender Shadel. 16-13 left in the period. Second shot, third shot on goal for Maryville, and they're up one nothing. So just the start that the Maryville Saints wanted. They come in as the lower seed, but they get the first goal on their third shot of the period. Juliuson almost makes a steal as it comes in on the forecheck. He'll try to chase it down below as Kelly. Looks out top, he connects with Grigg. Up through the middle. Flynn skates over and dumps it in behind the net. Stalk up, filters it around. Gathered up by the Saints. Barlow with the stretch pass. He connects with Hafner, but it was just a little too hot to handle. Kelly comes back to the near side, off the boards. Passes to no one. Put into the zone by Kemmer. Redbirds again. Find nobody here along the near side boards. Kemmer gives it up though. Shadle, that's Drew Shadle on his off wing. Stick handles around one, but then Feltz got a piece of it. Saints track it down in the near corner. Dragging it off the wall is Castino. He was looking in front. He had McKellen, but they don't connect on the pass. McKellen kicks it. Can't gather it with the stick. Punched back over to the far side. Hafner. Good stick moves, but then lost it on the back check as it was jostled away by the defender. Redbird spin it as Kelly puts it off the end wall. Trying to get it on the return feed, and they almost sprang Castino. Here comes Feltz back the other way. Drop pass. Found lane. Feltz again. Looking for somebody in front. He had Bracco cutting to the middle, but it was deflected and up and out of play. 14.31 to go here in the first period. Saints lead on a Jens Juliuson goal at 3.47 in the period. Yeah, exactly what they need to do. Great shot by Juliuson. 
putting his team up one nothing. And that was much more of what we saw from Juliusen earlier in the season, to where he gets that t the puck on a string, just drug it into the slot, and then wristed it home. Now here's Berkmeyer, and his one just goes wide. It comes back out in front. Scramble play. The whistle goes. The referee says it's just a dead play. But good to see the scramble in front, especially with Berkmeyer involved. As he was uh, slowed up by a shoulder injury late in the season. But yeah, nice to see him back in the lineup. Keller settles into the face-off circle. He goes against Camilleri. The Redbirds able to win it initially, but here come the Saints. They try to put one into the mixer, and it's jabbed out. Redbirds trying to catch up to it. Saints able to utilize their speed to keep it away. They overskate the puck momentarily, and then it's ratcheted over to the far side. Camilleri... Left it at the red line. Berkmeyer sees the check coming. Sidesteps the hit from Lewis. A little sauce play in towards goal. Berkmeyer puts it back into the middle. Nobody home in black. Hunter with a drive. That ends up up and over the goal. Kept alive by Keller. Berkmeyer's going off on a change. Here's Hunter. He'll take a wrister, and that's off the stick of the defender, Traska. Back the other way in on the attack. Lifted in by Vitt. Barlow goes in on the forecheck along with Juliuson. Simon Selly holds the line. Lost in the corner. Redbirds get it out. Closing in on seven minutes played. Not quite there, but we do have an icing call as Turner was the first one back. Yeah, so Maryville's done some great pressure on Illinois State in their zone. A couple icings here. Illinois State just had to get the puck out. So it's going to be a face-off again to the left of the Redbirds goaltender. Simon Selly out dueled. Rapkin made the face-off win. Redbirds haven't cleared the zone yet, though. Simon Selly trying to track it down, but getting there first is Gilbert. He kind of got caught in a rut over there by the boards. Rabkin reverses. They do sweep it out into the neutral zone. Saints collect it back in their own end. Saucer pass deflected by Juliuson looking for Barlow, but just out of his reach. Redbirds come back the other way, but good back checking by the Saints. Here's Juliuson to the backhand. On the right side of the slot, he was spun around. Good defensive play by Gilbert. Yeah, good back check by Gilbert. Hammered in. Redbirds slow it up. Unable to catch the Saints in the line change as they are off the bench quickly. Off a skate. Puck just floating there in the high slot. And Rapkin comes back to claim. Rapkin up the boards. Gilbert to the far side. Skating up to it is Barrent. Redbirds struggling to get out of their own zone as they have been put under some extreme pressure here by the Saints in the early going. Stretch pass up to the red line, tapped up by Young. He'll go off on a change as the Redbirds just needed some fresh bodies. Lane with the ramp play, it goes out of play. And the clock stops with 11.45 to go in the first. So five to two shots in favor of Maryville so far, as well as the score, one zero. Maryville not really allowing Illinois to get anything going. They've had a few chances. But uh, Maryville, like I said, the pressure that they're putting on Don Lowe has been pretty uh, prevalent. Buckmeyer tried to send it in. Shadle put him to the wall, testing that upper body injury. Over to the near boards. Buckmeyer gets it again and gets another shoulder by Flynn this time. Drop pass from Glass. Long wrister, and it's going to be difficult to, do, to uh, defeat Stalker from that distance as he makes the glove save. Was able to talk to Scout Stalkup's dad here beforehand. They're nervously watching on as, as Scout's a senior, and this could be the last game. It, it may not be, so. 
Wrist it in, that hit a body in front, was almost there on the doorstep for Castino, but he was tied up. And then the puck goes out of play. Eleven twenty-three to go here, first period. Hopefully you're enjoying this evening's contest, regardless of where you're tuning in from. Turner with it in his own corner, gave it away. They set up the one-timer on the left side of the slot, but it handcuffed Carcerano. Saints trying to get a clean zone exit. They do, and now here comes Barlow. He's got Simon Selly in support, but the numbers favored the Redbirds. Back towards the point, shot in by Verdu. Oh, what a play to knock that out of midair as Spencer Turner avoided a breakaway attempt for Illinois State. Knocked out in front, almost off the defender's stick as McKellen had the twig in there. If that had gone off his tape, that might have gone five hole on his own goaltender. Weird hop off the partition, comes back out for McKellen, and then the shot was blocked. Hafner to Bracco, tried to push it up through the middle, ends up with it on the far boards, McKellen Skated in now by Carcerano. He'll take a shot. Pad save made. Scooped on up to center. Gloved down by Drew Shadle. Near side pass. Finds the stick of Braun. He'll go to the far boards for Camilleri, but that one was taken away. Scooped up towards center. Gloved down by Lothar. Saints with it in their own zone. Off the near side glass. Out of the reach of Lane. Kemmer tries to tap it off to Bracco. Bracco dives and jabs it into the offensive zone. Pass too far behind Braun. This one will cross all the requisite lines, but the referee said that it will not be an icing call. Almost fell down for Lewis as he was guarded in the slot. Saints come in on the attack. Shot in by Feltz as he was trying to go glove side. Camilleri with the drop feed. Lewis in the neutral zone, spun around right in front of the Maryville bench. Here's Hunter over the red line, pops it over the goal. Oh. Can of corn apparently there for <laughs> Shadle as he'll glove it down. 9.04 to go here first period, Saints lead 1-0. Hunter. He tees it up, Ooh. and there it got caught right in the midsection of the goaltender. I don't think Shadel was too comfortable with where that went, but he ultimately kept it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you get Jimbo Hunt and winding up, Hunter winding up from the point, you never know what's going to happen because he's got a cannon on him. Hunter with a little poke check, keeping that one away from Young. Here comes Birkin on the far side, again dispossessed. Saints find open players in through the middle. Sabatino overskates initially, and that put the player offside. That was Tockman. Eight forty-seven to go, first period. Sends Julius in your only goal scorer. Saints get it in the attacking zone as Sabatino takes down a man. He took down Josh Gilbert. As two of the taller players on the ice right now collided with each other. Glass pops it down low. Looking for Castino. Saints are able to take it. Stretch pass out of the reach of Sabatino. So this should be an icing call and it will be. Clock stops with 8.20 to go. Kind of evened out a little bit here. Maryville was, uh, Maryville had the upper hand, but the Illinois State Redbirds kind of coming back. The shots are now seven to five, still in favor of Maryville, but they're more evened out. Illinois State seems to have kind of figured out Maryville's game and clogging up the neutral zone a little bit more. See if there are adjustments made after the first intermission. Right now, it's still working for Maryville overall as this one popped up and out of play. 
as uh, Hunter tried to slam it off the glass. Quite a few uh, Redbird fans here this evening. Love to see it. Welcome to Maryville. Big check thrown by Berkmeyer as he continues to test out that shoulder. So far, so good for the Maryville Saints forward. McKellen sweeps it back towards the point, looking for Shadle. He walks the line, sends one towards goal. That one was well wide as he was actually trying to connect with Carcerano on the near side. Berkmeyer shovels one out towards center. Carcerano bangs it right back in, fanned on it mostly, but it actually worked as a pass to McKellen. Return feed for McKellen was cut out. Saints lob it up towards the blue line, and that one will clear. That's going to spring a counterattack. Here comes Just. He makes his oh. way around. Oh, baby, what a goal! Riley Just makes it 2 to nothing. Maryville Saints. Good night, Irene. Riley Just was able to walk the Redbirds defender and beat the goaltender Shadle to the short side. Top shelf. You can't make them up like that, Todd. That's about as pretty as they get. Just made a nice little move around the defender, scooped it up on the blocker side. Wow. Now nine times out of 10, that's gonna be on the glove hand side, but with the right-handed catching goaltender, he ended up putting that one perfectly, and that's a difficult to save to make with a blocker. Boy, yes it is. Saints sweep it up to the blue line, no further. Stick save made, and then the rebound came out loose, but it couldn't be handled by Grigg. Redbirds have it in their own zone. 7.08 left to go as the goal comes at 12.25 of the first period. Here's a steal, the Saints get it down low. The goalie is scrambling, but they could not get it in from a tough angle. Redbirds get it out, Carcerano up in... Now it's brought in, and oh, oh, what a toe save made, and another one! Scout Stall Cup flashing the pads out left and right. Wow, great couple saved by Scout Stall Cup. Awesome opportunities for the Redbirds, and the Redbirds just ice it out of the zone. David Flynn was the one who was denied initially, then the puck comes back out in front. And then Stalkup had to make a left toe save. And we were just inches away from this game being two to one. Wow. Man, those, <laughs> like you said, left pad, right pad. Scout Stalkup on his game so far. Now the Redbirds aren't going away anytime soon. No, they are. saw right there that they are capable of striking quickly. Yeah, I thought that first one was in. I thought it was going. It was trickling as here comes Lewis. He's taken out, good sweep check from the side. Camilleri keeps it in on the line. High stick comes up, that's gonna be called. Lewis will go to the box. And that's one of those calls that uh, Redbird fans will feel a little bit hard done by, but it's it's one of those control fouls, I think. That yeah. Lewis was kind of off balance. And by the book, you still have to be in control of your stick. Mm -hmm. But the first power play of the game goes the way of the Saints. Yeah, so we'll see what the uh, special teams can do here, see what the power play looks like. Juliuson, Simon Selly, Barlow, Spencer Turner, and it looks like Feltz. I can't quite see his number. They win it back to Turner. He skates along the line, stick handles, dusts it off, takes a wrister. That goes up high as a person got in front. They jab it past Juliuson, and the Redbirds will clear. Stalkup slows it up with Rankin coming in quick. Rapkin still on the forecheck. Underneath the skate of Turner, but Grigg kind of peeled off, giving Turner a free pass. He'll come up the center and then skate to the left. Slows up along the hash marks, looking to get it back towards the blue line. Saints working around the perimeter. Simon Selly goes over the far circle, off the skate of Turner, and ultimately Glass gets a piece of it and barely gets it over the head of the Saints defender. 
Verdu was looking up to Simon Selly. And Simon Selly and Verdu both held it in, at least for the moment, and then they dropped it right onto the stick of Braun, who does clear. Camilleri trying to put on the pressure. Stalkup feeds it over. Rink wide pass to Hafner. He avoids the poke check, and then Shadle takes him to the wall. 48 seconds left on the power play. Kemmer back in his own zone. We've seen this a few times during the regular season to where the Saints just seem to look so much better five on five than they do on the power yeah, play. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Right now, the Redbirds have had a couple easy clearances. They won't get one here. Feltz oh. with a shot. That one went off the right toe, the goaltender. Nobody in black collected the rebound, and the Redbirds get four fresh players out. Feltz stick handles to Bracco. He saw the check coming, swept it in before Shadel could take him out. Flynn can't jab it away. Second attempt gets it up to Rapkin. Now here's a fan by Feltz. Rapkin from the near side. Puts one towards goal, almost oh. caught. Ooh. Stalkup was starting Out. to cheat off that post. That one does escape the zone as Flynn set it back, trying to hit the cutting McClellan, but unsuccessful on all fronts. Couple grade A opportunities for Illinois State. Unfortunately, it just barely squeaked out of Maryville zone and they uh, brought it in offside. So McKellen. Goes against Keller on the faceoff dot. Just outside the Maryville line. Redbirds win it, and it's wristed in. Sent around by Tresca. 3.45 to go, stolen by the Redbirds, trying to set it up. They get it in front, and the save is made. Castino didn't get all of it that he wanted, but still a chance. And the save made by Stalkup. Yeah, good positioning. Stop, scout stock up was waiting for that hard shot, but it just trickled in. Castino wins it, but pushes it forward and then had his stick explode out of his hands as Hunter sent it around. Saints trying to spring a counterattack, but the pass just out of the reach on the zone exit. Looking for just. Here's Gridley. He'll send it back to the line. It's the first time in quite some time that the Saints have had their full complement of players. Hunter steps up and throws a body into Castino. Redbirds no slouches themselves as they've got a very deep bench as well. Tapped up towards the blue line. Back and forth it goes. Red line to blue line. Back to the blue as the Saints bring it in. Poke check dispossesses Keller. Castino jabs at it. Kicks it up to McKellen. He crosses the red line and lost control of it. Heinzman was partially in the way as well. Just throws a stick in there, but skating in is Traska. Filters around to the near side. 2.42 left to go here in the first. Traska left it, and he tried to get it to Barrett. Barrett gets it back, the shot in on the blocker side. Young denied. He'll try the far side, never got a shot off. Saucer pass, dangerous in their own zone. Saints get away with it, can't. Find Gridley on the counterattack. Juliuson almost went skate to stick as it goes back and forth through the neutral zone. Maryville back in their own end. Tied up along the boards. Almost a dangerous play there by Chiadini, and then oh. he is taken out below the goal line. He's looking around. Fans are standing on their feet. Nothing's going to happen. Juliuson makes a steal, and he's going to take on the defender one-on-one. -on -one. And now they've got a penalty behind the play. So that's going to deny the attacking opportunity as Spencer Turner is going to go into the box for the cross-check retaliation. Yeah, they were looking for a penalty behind the goal line when Keodini was taken down. Jens Juliusen gets the break in the behind the play. Spencer Turner gives the Redbird a trip and he's going to the penalty box. So Illinois State goes to their first power play and that will, unless they score, it'll pretty much last the entirety of the second period. In fact, there will be potentially two seconds left to open the second period. Obviously, Illinois State hoping they can find the equalizer. They get it in front, but it missed. Puck filters in behind the net. It's jabbed around. Castino trying to leave it there for McKellen. 
Into the mixer, nobody home. Jabbed off the boards. Carcerano to McCallum. Just north of the corner, now he takes it south. Back to the blue line. McKellen calling for it back as they try to work off the half wall. McKellen to the far side and they put oh. it right into the goaltender. What a save there as going post to post is stalk up and Shadle is denied. All he can do is put his hands on his knees. What a great pass across the middle to find the wide open Shadle. What even a better save by Scout Stalkup. He doesn't want this to be his last game and he is showing it. And a one-timer score! Right off the faceoff, it's Radke. He takes a wicked slapper from just outside the high slot. That one beat Scout Stalkup on the Redbirds. 13th shot of the game and they have cut the lead in half. As I'm saying that, a rocket from the point. Two to one, still in favor of Maryville, but what a rocket on the power play. Redbirds make it a one goal game. So Radke scores at 18.52 on the power play. As that penalty against Spencer Turner ends up coming back to haunt the Saints, they do still have the lead, but it is a precarious one at best right now. now Turner almost got it around Gilbert. Redbirds lifted over here to the near boards. Castino kicks it out. McKellen tripped up as the bodies collide. Castino smushed up against the boards as well. Lifted on out by Hunter. He gets it in the attacking zone, but not under clean control. Redbirds come right back with it. Under 30 seconds to go here in the first. Saints looking for one last push up the ice. Can't turn it over. They don't. Hafner shoved it up towards the attacking blue line. Lost it. 15 seconds left. Gridley with it. Grig on the forecheck. Gridley near side. Got away with a dangerous pass. Stretching it out. Here's Bracco. He looks back at the clock. Sees how much time he's got. Takes the shot. And that's turned away. Good save made by Shadel as time expires. Great opportunity, great period of hockey so far, Todd. This is what it's all about, is this, is this type of hockey. Two great teams going head-to-head, -head, one goal game, and the shots are separated by two. Pretty much what you would expect from both of these teams. They were only separated by a few in terms of the goals allowed. Illinois State, a little bit better on the offensive end, but so far through 20 minutes, it's the Saints with the one goal edge. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have your Hogan Trucking intermission report. This is the MACHA Conference Tournament. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates because we've learned to save for the moments that were always there. Never tasted this good. In today's sports world, high quality video and accurate data are key elements 
for improving team results, player development, and fan engagement. Pixelot, the world's leading AI automated sports production company, provides an end-to-end -end video and data solution for fans, players, and coaches. Pixelot systems are installed around the world and produce thousands of live matches every day with customized live graphics, ads, color commentary, on, uh, and play-by-play. -play. At the end of the game, our AI generates highlight reel 100% automatically. Analysts and the coaching staff get video breakdowns and stats from VidSwap, Pixelot video analysis platform. Each game captured is automatically broken down by sports professionals on a video editing platform for in-depth analysis. The real-time game breakdowns from live video and official data include shot charts, heat maps, and detailed game, team, and player stats. The platform offers a variety of editing and self-coding tools so you can easily review plays and coach your team better both during and after the game. This all-in-one cost-effective solution also allows you to telestrate, tag, and add notes to each move, and watch your upcoming opponent's matches on the video exchange platform. Pixelot produces and analyzes thousands of games every single day from over 130 leagues and tournaments around the globe. Join the AI revolution in sports. will cook you with that first step. Your L, sir. Compliments of the chef. Number 10s, more gold than Midas. Midas who? One, two, three, four, three, 24s will live in your head. I'm home. 33s put in so many hours, they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, 33? <laughs> Thumbs up, old man. Run it back. I said run it back. 50s. Ice in their veins. And 87s are so good, they just set up shop in the end zone. Next. There's power in numbers. Take yours. Power Aid. More power for 0 to 99. More power for me. The CCM one-piece boot. The CCM one-piece boot. If I had these in my day, I could have been Connor McDavid. I could have been Connor McDavid. Anyone could be Connor McDavid. Helps make your feet faster, gives you a closer fit. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Looking sharp, bud. Good thing you got that one-piece boot, you duster. Back to the Maryville University Hockey Center as we are in the Hogan Trucking Intermission Report. 2-1 to one in favor of the Saints after the first period. Chuck, you mentioned it there before we went to break. An entertaining first period of hockey. A lot of offense. 13 shots in favor of uh, Illinois State over Maryville. But 
Maryville ultimately ends up with the lead on the scoreboard. Yeah, anything you want in a hockey game, hitting, passing, shooting, scoring, I mean, that's what hockey is, right? So we saw of it, and we saw um, it saw good uh, shooting, passing, scoring, and goaltending. So uh, very, very entertaining first period. I don't know what else more I could say on that front, uh, but Maryville comes out 2-1, to one. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's close, Todd. I mean, it really is. It's it's hard to uh, you really you know you really analyze and talk about games like these because they're so back and forth. They're so close that no team really has the upper hand. And it's interesting to see how different games play out. We had our game earlier this afternoon, which was Bradley against SIUE. Bradley won five to nothing. Just to update you guys on the the scores at home. In the first period, there it was back and forth, but you had chunks of the first period that kind of went one way or the other in this game it was back and forth and although it wasn't a track meet you didn't have that sustained possession by either team it was one team would get into the zone get a couple shots the other team would find the loose puck go the other way get a couple shots themselves and it just kind of went back and forth that way <laughs> How does it just mirror? Does this music keep getting louder? Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're turning it up on as, us. As I'm sitting here, folks, <laughs> I have to read Todd's lips because this music keeps getting louder and louder. <laughs> but back to back to what's important. Yeah, to your point, Todd, you're right. I mean, uh, b- both teams had a chance on a power play and uh, good chances. Uh, great, great goaltending by both sides. And you're right. There haven't really been there hasn't really been chunks to where you're going. Oh man, it's a Maryville's game, or oh man, it's it's Illinois State's game. It's back and forth, great play, great speed. Uh, it's going to make for a great second and third period. Well, let's take a look at the uh, Saints goals that made it two to nothing initially, and then a late goal scored by Illinois State to to get the game out of the two to one to score. First goal of the game was scored by Jens Juliusen. That one came back at 3:47. And it was a, a great play here, as you see Julie Singh brings it in from the right wing, cuts back in towards the slot, cuts the shot back across the green, beats the goaltender on the uh, blocker side, as that would become kind of a theme for both goals for the Saints. Yep. But the, the second one from Riley Just, that one comes at 12:25. That is just a spectacular goal overall. Geez, he gets around the defender. Defender kind of overcommitted a little bit there, but I mean, to scoop that up the way that he did into that upper 90, I mean, that's just a highlight real play. I mean, he had a guy wide open, too. So if he decided not to shoot that, he had his partner wide open. But he decided to shoot it. He made it a top 10 looking goal. I mean, that was that was incredible. So, you know, any goal he's not, that was just a great shot. Right. Top cheese, as Marshy likes to say. <laughs> uh, great, great shot. So great goals there for the Saints, but it was answered by a great goal for Illinois State as a power play goal came in 1852. It was a face-off win for Illinois State, and you see there the slapper just able to beat Scout Stalkup. Not often you're going to beat a goaltender from that distance, but, I mean, when it comes straight off of the face-off and just an absolute ripper from Radke, and that gets Illinois State right back into it heading into the intermission. Yeah, and, and not not to mention the the distance. Uh, there was no one in front of Scout either. So uh, the goaltender from Maryville. So great shot, uh, laser from the point, like we said. And it just goes to show Illinois State is not out of this. They're not done. Uh, they're not giving up. It's going to be a great game. So one goal margin is all we have after 20 minutes of play. We'll see how the second period shakes out when we come back. We'll have the puck drop here from the Maryville University Hockey Center and the MACHA Conference Tournament. a dream. Go back to sleep. There's power in numbers. Number ones will cook you in that first step. Your L, sir. Compliments of the chef. Number tens, more gold than Midas. Midas who? Twenty-fours will live in your head. 
33s put in so many hours, they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, 33? Clowns up, old man. Run it back. I said run it back. 50s. Ice in their veins. And 87s are so good, they just set up shop in the end zone. Next! There's power in numbers. Take yours. Power Aid. More power for 0 to 99. More power for me. CCM one piece boot. The CCM one piece boot. If I had these in my day, I could have been Connor McDavid. I could have been Connor McDavid. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Helps make your feet faster, gives you a closer fit. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Looking sharp, bud. Good thing you got that one piece boot, you duster. In today's sports world, high quality video and accurate data are key elements for improving team results, player development, and fan engagement. Pixelot, the world's leading AI automated sports production company, provides an end to end video and data solution for fans, players, and coaches. Pixelot systems are installed around the world and produce thousands of live matches every day with customized live graphics ads, color commentary, on, uh, and play-by-play. Play. At the end of the game, our AI generates highlight reel 100% automatically. And we're back here at the Maryville University Hockey Center, 2-1, to one, as we begin the second period, and we get an early icing call against the Saints. 12 seconds into the middle frame. Saints come out with their top line. Answered by Illinois State. They've got a forward line of um, Castino, McKellen. Radke was in there as well. Or check that, that was Carcerano. Illinois State gets it in. Stalkup faked out the Redbird player, but also his own defender on the pass around the net. Now here's a steal by McKellen. They get it into the slot, shooting glove side, and it goes wide. Sage trying to peel it off the wall. Held in by Kelly. He goes across the blue oh. line. Oh, and the puck was tipped, and it goes off the post. Almost a 2-2 two -two game. Drew Shadle just putting it in towards net. And that's why that's never a bad idea. Man, Kelly. that sure changed direction. To McKellen. They try to put it into the mixer as Castino was the intended target. Fresh off the bench now. Grigg lost control of it. Camilleri was there as well. Here's Juliuson, rink wide pass. He finds Bracco. He's going to try to cut through. He scores! <laughs> Kyle Bracco restores the two goal lead for the Saints as he lowered that shoulder, cut through the middle, and scooped it over the glove hand side. Exactly what you got to do, breaking in, Todd. Like you said, lowered that shoulder. The lefty coming in from the outside and putting it in. Three to one, Maryville Saints. A 
Fracco makes it three to three to one, excuse me, a two goal lead. The goal comes at 120 of the second period. Now trying to do the same thing was his numerical counterpart in Sam Braun, but a diving defender was able to avoid him cutting back through the middle. The puck was left on the doorstep. Lewis puts his stick to the ice in some frustration. Uh, we were just moments away, if not for that diving defender, from this game being three to two. Yeah. So the Saints cannot rest on their laurels. As Illinois State more than capable. Now here's Hafner, avoids the poke check, puts it in front. He was looking for Lane. Off the short side, may have hit off the blocker of Shadel. 17.50 left to go here in the second. Saints working the puck around. Back to the blue line, to the wall. Good stick handling here from Lane. He goes back to the point. Wrist shot in, blocked. Young shaking his left hand. He's, he's got some pain. And then another shot from Verdu. He's the one that hit Young in the hand. Second opportunity goes out of play. It was a win off a stick. So Maryville finding that spark. They get that early goal. And it's been in the Redbird zone ever since. Definitely put that shot off the post in the back of your mind because that one could really change the game of this complexion. A wrist shot from the circle. Everybody hacking and whacking at it. Kept alive by the Saints as it's backhanded down low by... Gridley, they were looking for just in the slot. That was cut out. Grigg gets it up the boards, but not out. And then a late poke check from Flynn was able to knock it loose. Gridley chases it down, out races Grigg. Up the wall for Keller. Dangerous drop pass in his own zone. Here's Flynn from the goal line. Harry's into the corner. He's roughed up along the boards. Looking for a desperation play to get it out. Saints. Not out of trouble yet. Yep. Now there's a penalty upcoming. It's on Illinois State, they got the, got the hands up. And with these wonderful Maryville jerseys, I'm trying to figure out who got hit. But Maryville will go on the power play. So roughing is the call. Berkmeyer, he got hit up high. Nate Radke is the perpetrator. So the Saints with an opportunity to extend their lead. They're 0 for 1 on the power play. Illinois State 1 for 1. Their lone goal came, as you saw during the intermission, on that one-timer straight off the faceoff. Juliuson gets it, drags it back from the corner, gives it back to the blue line. Near side now for Simon Selly. He goes rink wide, intending it for Juliuson, but hit a stick on the way through. Saints keep it alive after a scramble play along the boards. Juliuson sets it up. Handcuffed Feltz initially, he recovers. Puts it in towards the front. Simon Selly's tied up. Illinois State clears. Feltz goes back. Simon Selly on the far wing. Gets it from Verdu. Simon Selly will bring it in, but he's all by himself. He'll take a shot. That's deflected out of play. 118 left in the power play. 16.07 left in the period. So Maryville's second power play unit coming out. Phil Kemmer and Feltz on the point. Bracco, Hafner, and Lane on the forward. Kemmer gets it back from Feltz and tried to return the favor. Lynn got in front of it and he'll send it the length of the ice. Stalkip slows it up, leaves it for Kemmer. He'll skate up the gut, pass to the left, or excuse me, the right. Bracco gains the blue line, stood up there by Shadel. Kemmer puts it in front, looking for Bracco. He does find it, but he was bumped off initially. Kemmer to Feltz, takes the slapper. Now he takes it, 
That was knocked down by Kelly. Bracco to Kemmer. A little slow developing on that play. High wrister off the glass. Turner spins it away. Here's Bracco to the forehand. Kemmer outside the circle. He'll take a wrister. Oh, oh there's a save made. What a stretching save by Shadle as he got a left pad onto that one. Exactly. It was a great stretch by Shadle. Juliuson comes back in, but offside was Barlow. 11 seconds left on the power play. These four guys to my right, they're dads of uh, Illinois State guys, and they remind me of what me and three of my buddies would be like watching their kids playing at this level, Todd. Screaming, hollering, offside. You know, it's exactly how I am at Blues game. So really cool to see uh, these visiting teams bring people and their parents. It's really cool for them, and it's neat for us to see people come into the hockey center as well. Got to give it to their bravery, if nothing else, because they're standing basically at center ice. Nothing wrong with that. Nobody sections off anything, but typically the away fans sit a little bit more on the uh, yeah, on that right side. Right side of the arena. Here's Simon Selly in front, oh. and it's turned away. Simon Selly gets it back from Juliuson. Wrist shot in. That's knocked down. Turner takes another chance. It's off a stick and out of play. 14.30 to go here in the second. It's a two-goal margin with the Saints on top, but they are pressuring, trying to advance it even more. Offensive zone for Maryville as they win it. And it's cleared out back into Maryville zone. Now backhanded over here to the near boards. Saints bring it in. Tockman spinned away from pressure. Now he's roughed up by Gilbert. Going to the ice, making the play, Vitt. From the blue line, skates up a little bit. And behind the goal, take it away from Sabatino. Vitt whacks at it, Sabatino spins. Oh. oh, and he just missed the near post on that shot. Knocked down by Carcerano to McKellen as it was filtered through Castino. Saints end up with it in their own zone. Now Gilbert. Fires it in, off of skate, so no icing. 13.30 left to go here in the second. Saints increased their lead. It was cut to a one goal margin at the end of the first period, but Bracco made it two goals again. Stick lifted, Keller with a shot. That just missed on the far side. We've seen Shadle. Literally in the butterfly yeah. <laughs> several times in this game. I, they call that position the butterfly a lot, but he has literally been like legs down, arms out, wings and everything. Feltz just blindly puts it over to the far side, gives it away. The shot deflected away. Saints trying to counter. They break into the zone on the far wing. Looking for just in front. But Feltz couldn't find it. Feltz pokes it away. It's loose in the middle. Young leaves it. Flipped up by Lothar. Goaltender for the Saints gave it away momentarily. Now the Saints put it out towards center ice. Settling into a little bit of a lull here in the last minute or so. Maryville tried to stretch it out to Juliuson. He ends up with it as he picked it off the red line. Centers one. The shot in from Berkmeyer. Rebound chance. <laughs> Juliuson denied. They try to scoop it in. Shadle is doing the snow angel. And he is able to cover it up. Wow, I thought, I thought one of them had it. When Juliuson got that rebound, I thought that was going in. But man, Shadle... He's not very tall, as we can see here, but he sure, he sure can move. Have we seen, he's been in the butterfly, he's everywhere, and that last save, what a great save by Illinois State's goaltender, Shadel. Very reminiscent of some of the goaltenders you used to see in the late 80s, early 90s, to where they weren't all these mammoths of 
six <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah. But everybody was athletic back then as well, so. Oh. Now we get a penalty in behind the play. Holding is going to be the call. The referee is eyeing up Drew Shadle. So I think the Saints are going to head off onto a third power play. They sure are. I'm, sh I'm sure Matt Simon Sully from Maryville is really wanting to get a goal here. As Julian, Jens Juliuson, Simon Sully, and Barlow are out there. Verdu's at the point. And of course, the one that got the puck was uh, Turner. Couldn't tell who that was initially. He gives it away. Now here's a shorthanded oh. chance and a save made with the glove. Rapkin was denied. He tried to go glove hand side and Stalkup just calmly turned it away. Juliuson races in. He's roughed up by Braun. They're still going at it along the boards. Redbirds are able to clear. Stalkup left it. Arlo brings it in. Juliuson set up for a oh. drop pass, but they didn't put it in the right spot. Verdu. Try to keep it away from Flynn. He's off to the races. Another shorthanded breakaway. And a big pass save by Stalkup. Flynn with another opportunity as he tries to set it up for Grigg. He'll just whack it down low. Barlow skates up to it. Two breakaways shorthanded for Illinois State. But Scout Stalkup comes up big both times. Now the Redbirds will be kicking themselves for coming up empty on those chances, but Maryville will be kicking themselves that they even allowed them. Now here's Feltz with a wicked wrister from the blue line. That didn't miss by much. Goaltender didn't have a clue where it was. Simon Selly struggles to get it off the boards after it kind of rolled over his stick. Illinois State picking up the physicality on this penalty kill, much to the pleasure of the aforementioned fathers that are over to our right-hand side. Hafner brings it across the line. He'll drag it down all the way to the goal line, wrap around a tap, puts it out to the circle. Oh, oh. oh, and a big pad save made. May have gone off the cuff of the glove. Nevertheless, Shadle kept it out. Kemmer couldn't find the loose puck. Held in along the blue line by Bracco. Sweeps it across to the far side. Another save made by Shadle. Boy, oh boy. He is... He's he is hurting my groin just watching this. He is <laughs> out there picking flowers, Todd. Big game here this afternoon. Early evening from Jared Shadel. He is really keeping his team in this right now. Yes, he is. I mean, what a bunch of great saves. Face off one. Saints get it again. Long wrist shot. Nibbled off the waffle. Saints keep it alive along the boards. Almost dispossessed. They jostle for it along the end wall. Sabatino is calling for it. Keller got a piece of it, but couldn't get it under control. Chasing it down is Gridley. He's able to keep it away from Carcerano. McKellen comes in to get a piece of it. Saints intercept the pass back towards the blue line. Berkmeyer gains the red line and dumps it in. Keller chases it down in the corner, sweeps it far boards. Kemmer steps up from the blue line, looking to return it back for Keller. Berkmeyer eyes up what's in front of him. Ran out of options. Redbirds get it out to center, and now here's a giveaway by Hunter. He comes back and cleans up his mistake. He knocked it away from Castino. Hunter back in his own zone. Jab down low by Paravolta. Puck pops loose at center ice. Everybody looked to be going for the body check. Redbird fans wanting an offside, not gonna win that battle. Long shot in and a stick save made as the paddle was flat along the ice. Grigg jabs it into the offensive zone as he tries to angle it around. Hunter comes in late, throws the check with the puck right there, so well-timed. Paravolta keeps it alive, at least momentarily, but it was knocked away from Flynn. 
And the Redbirds will push the reset button. No icing here. Gridley in behind his own goal. Here comes Radke on the four check. Saints get it out. Cross ice pass, they find their man. Barlow's in the middle, the shot comes oh. in and that's off the side of the net, maybe the blocker as well. Matt Simon Selly breaking in, putting a good move on that defender. The Saints absolutely buzzing on the offensive end. Mm -hmm. And it's weird, the shots still only differ by two. It's 20 to 18. But you just feel like the quality of chances have been slightly on the edge of Maryville. Yeah, for sure. 7.45 to go here in the second. A back and forth contest with Maryville starting to tighten their grip a little bit. They scrum for it along the near boards. Rapkin comes out with it. He's one of the two Redbird players that came up empty-handed on short-handed breaks. Hafner back to the circle for Bracco. He peels away from pressure, takes a wrist but it's still blocked. Puck ricochets off the end wall, back out to Rapkin. Rapkin taps it, Radke at center ice. Feltz curls away, back towards the near side, off the boards for Hafner. Lane cuts towards the middle, and the pass was too far behind. That'll set up Lewis going the other way. He's joined by Rapkin and a player in the middle. Lewis tried to cut around. The shot in by Rapkin. Denied. And then a short angle chance. Just didn't have the angle. They jab it away from Kelly. A late stick comes in to knock it back for Shadle. Saints hold the line again. Here's a chance from the circle. They put it over the goal. It was off the shoulder as it went out of play. Yeah, you're right, Todd. Maryville has found that, uh, they found that sweet spot here in the second period to where they're really buzzing, everything's clicking for them. 20 shots on goal, but uh, Illinois State still has 18, and it's only a two goal game. Off the face off, Sabatino was going to ice, still managed to get that one towards net. Six and a half to go. Turner from the point. Pinches in. Tockman oh. deflected in front. Score! Sabatino on the third opportunity from the far side after the puck ricocheted around a couple times. And it's four to one Saints. The right wing parking right in front of the net on the side there. And it's now a 4-1 game as Sabatino scores and Illinois State Redbirds change their goaltender. So that'll bring in Paulie Lency. He's a big boy, we, we were talking during warmups, Todd, and we were down by the ice, and he is, he is a tall, he's a big goaltender. But this is one of those plays that uh, they're basically having to take shade out just to try to get Get something, something rolling. Yeah, yeah, something going their way. It's not really a, an indication of how Shadle played. Because he's been playing, oh my gosh, some saves that he's been making. Exactly. Uh, this game could easily be 6-1, to one, if not for him. Turner holds the line, tried to go far point. Swept back by Berkemeyer. A shot from Verdu was knocked down. Turner does his best imitation of a goaltender to kick it, to keep it alive. From the edge of the circle, Saints trying to wrap it on around. Turner with the soft hands on the pass to the near side. Keller wrapping it around in front. And it just wouldn't settle down for the Saints player. I believe that was Barlow. That no, was Berkemeyer. He was oh, big save by Stalk up, and then the second opportunity is blocked. Lewis tried to send it back to the point, just out of the reach of glass. Stretch pass off the stick of Lewis, avoids an icing call, but he's outdueled by Verdu. Saints get it up over the blue line, glass right back in, Barlow is the intended target, and then the pass was out of the reach of everybody, including Simon Selly. Simon Selly doing a little bit of complaining as he did seem to have a little bit of an edge, but 
Basically, they kind of counted. <laughs> I guess he's. <laughs> I thought he was saying that he had the edge on the foot race, but I guess he was saying it crossed the red line. Yeah. <laughs> He, t he pointed at the spot, and then the ref pointed at the spot where they cleared it from. <laughs> and Verdu chops it over, looking for Barlow. Walled off by Gilbert. McKellen ran out of options, just puts it out in front. That ended up being pretty dangerous. Now here come the Saints on the counter. Juliuson with that hair flowing in behind him. Cuts past two defenders. Still ends up with the puck after it was given away. Glass over skated. Barlow skate to stick, and he got the shot off. Pad save made, and then the second chance put off the side of the net by Simon Selly. Penalty called by the referee down low. Tripping will be the call, and the Saints will be going back to the power play. Boy, I mean, I, I know you you know typically you don't mean to do things. You don't mean to uh, get an infraction out there, but if Illinois State wants to come back, uh, this three-goal deficit, they're going to have to stop getting penalties and stay even strength. Because we know, we, we've seen they have skill. Um, they're a great hockey team. They just need to stay out of the box. Quit giving Maryville these advantages. The Saints have to regroup back in the neutral zone. They spring it right in. Here comes Lane. To the backhand, wraps it around, oh, and they oh, oh. almost popped it off the back of the goaltender. That one came up in the air, and it was hard to tell where it went. Kemmer to the far side. Feltz in the corner. It's Bracco. He'll bring it back out. Bracco to Feltz. Wristed up high and missed everything. Hit a partition. Oh. Redbirds do not clear. Kemmer, Feltz, just outside the circle. Lost it for a moment. Redbirds <laughs> still do not clear. Bracco keeps it alive to the half wall. Feltz at the point. Near side Kemmer. Tried to go rink wide and then Bracco kind of fanned on the shot as it came a little too close to his body. Finally the Redbirds get it out. Saints got it into the offensive zone, but Redbirds collect it, send it right back out to center. Racco's tied up by Flynn. As the players went down, Hafner over the far wing. Barlow sidesteps Shadel, tries to track it down in the corner. And the puck kind of just wouldn't settle down for him. 17 seconds left in the power play. Penalty called against Trevor Glass. Pretty much looking like the Saints are going to go 0 for 4 now at the man advantage. Given the fact they have a three goal lead, I suppose that's more palatable, but Saints fans will be wishing that they could have gotten at least one of these in the back of the net on the power play. Make, yeah. make your opponent pay. Ah, Jens. And there's going to be an answering call <laughs> as Jens Julison's going to go in for tripping. Just got that stick caught in there a little too long and Shadle went down. Hard to skate when there's a stick in the way. Yeah, typically there is. So we'll see what uh, Illinois State can do here on the power play. I'm sure they're finally glad to get one their way uh, as I'm, you know, it was coming. So they'll go on the power play. Face off to the right of Scout Stell Cup. 2.12 left in the period, so 90% of this period is going to be on the power play unless they score. Illinois State's lone goal came on the power play. They'll try to get another one here. They get it towards goal, and the defender in front got a piece, deflected it over towards the near boards. McKellen sets it up on the near half wall, tried to dish it off. He was intending it for Will Kelly, but they weren't on the same page as this one escapes the zone. Similar to the first period, we're almost going to end the second period with another Illinois State power play unless they score again. Everybody just kind of running into one another right now. This puck is ramped off the stick of McKellen and out of play. 
136 to go in the second, 125 to go in the Julius and Power, or uh, penalty, excuse me. So, Todd, we're looking at the board downstairs. Bradley's going to be playing Iowa. Correct. Yes, because we first originally thought Iowa State. So, Bradley plays Iowa, and then the winner of this game will play Iowa State. Play Iowa State. Uh, Riley just had, almost had his steal. Here's Gilbert. Rink oh. line it goes. That one missed both Kemmer and oh. Barrent. Interference. Maryville's going to go in another. All right, and I'm sorry, Maryville's getting another penalty. So for at least a minute seven, it's going to be five on three for Illinois State. A great chance for them to go into the third. Down by you know, two or three, right? Or two or one or two because they could score two if they score one here in the first minute seven. Have a chance at two different power plays. So the penalty called against uh, Tim Rye. So that probably isn't going to sit too well with the coaching staff as Rye hasn't had too much ice time and then in a rare shift gets put into the penalty box. Lewis gets it over. Uh, that's Will Kelly. Uh, Carcerano, Kelly again, all the way down, and they were trying to connect with Carcerano again, but just wouldn't hit on the tape. Here's Shadle, Kelly, circle. Again, they try to set up that backdoor play. If there's not a defensive stick there, that's going to end up as a goal, but right now the Saints are getting away with it. Chopped at, kept alive by the Redbirds. Scooped up to the blue line, held in by Shadle. 26 seconds left in the power play. Kelly puts it towards goal. That's off a skate, and the Saints will get it out. Potential shorthanded break here. On the right wing, they shoot it off the blocker, trying to test the goaltender, Lency, who has not been in the game long. Now here's a breakaway opportunity. Score! The Redbirds cut it in half. The power play goal makes it 4-2. A fantastic finish there from Flynn. And the, the first Maryville penalty had literally just expired. It went 1-0. Our, our Maryville's guy came out, and then they scored. So what a breakaway. Uh, what a goal by Flynn. Roofed it over. Scout Stalk up. 8.5 seconds left in the second, and that brings Illinois State within two. So on the scoreboard, they still have a penalty up there, but the penalty box is empty for Maryville. Now they've removed it, so good eye there, Chuck, to notice that the Maryville player had just come out, thus making that technically a five-on-four power play goal. Right. And not allowing Illinois State to start the second period on the power play, but nevertheless, they'll take the goal one way or the other that cuts the lead back in half. And so far, based on the percentages, if you're Maryville, you've got to stay out of the box in the third period because uh, Illinois State is two for three on the power play. Yeah, got to stay out of the penalty box and need to keep up the strong play. Uh, it's still anybody's game. Of, uh, a two-goal lead, that's nothing. So uh, Maryville's got to keep in it, uh, keep getting the shots on. And we're in for an exciting third period. So don't go anywhere. We'll have your Hogan Trucking Intermission Report. We'll talk about what happened in the second and look forward to the third as well. This is the MACHA Conference Tournament. Number ones will cook you with that first step. Your L, sir. 
compliments of the chef. Number 10s, more gold than Midas. Midas who? One, two, three, four, three, two, one. 24s will live in your head. I'm home. 33s put in so many hours, they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, 33? Thumbs up, old man. Run it back. I said run it back. 50s, ice in their face. And 87s are so good, they just set up shop in the end zone. Next! There's power in numbers. Take yours. Power Aid. More power for 0 to 99, more power for me. CCM one piece boot. The CCM one piece boot. If I had these in my day, I could have been Connor McDavid. I could have been Connor McDavid. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Helps make your feet faster, gives you a closer fit. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Looking sharp, bud. Good thing you got that one piece boot, you duster. In today's sports world, high quality video and accurate data are key elements for improving team results, player development, and fan engagement. Pixelot, the world's leading AI automated sports production company, provides an end to end video and data solution for fans, players, and coaches. Pixelot systems are installed around the world and produce thousands of live matches every day with customized live graphics ads, color commentary, on, uh, and play-by-play. Play. At the end of the game, our AI generates highlight reel, 100% automatically. Analysts and the coaching staff get video breakdowns and stats from VidSwap, Pixelot video analysis platform. Each game captured is automatically broken down by sports professionals on a video editing platform for in-depth analysis. The real-time game breakdowns from live video and official data include shot charts, heat maps, and detailed game, team, and player stats. The platform offers a variety of editing and self-coding tools so you can easily review plays and coach your team better both during and after the game. This all-in-one cost-effective solution also allows you to telestrate, tag, and add notes to each move and watch your upcoming opponent's matches on the video exchange platform. Pixelot produces and analyzes thousands of games every single day from over 130 leagues and tournaments around the globe. Join the AI revolution in sports. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. From now on, we're not going to leave. 
leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. And welcome into the Hogan Trucking Intermission Report with the score four to one in favor of the Maryville Saints after two periods of play. Well, we saw a lot of goals in that second period, three in total, two for Maryville, one for Illinois State. The margin remains doubled, but obviously it's just right there, if not for a couple of saves by Stalkup and Maryville, as we said, has to stay out of the box as well. Yeah, I mean, you got to be happy if you're married. They'll absolutely uh, have some humility and know that it's not over, right? Uh, they're facing a, a difficult Redbirds team, and it's a two-goal game. Yes, feel good going into the locker room, but know that absolutely you have to stay out of the box. You have to keep on that pressure. You have to keep getting shots on. As we saw, Illinois State made a goaltender change. So it just goes to show that what Maryville is doing is working. They just need to keep it going. So interestingly enough, after the goaltender change, that seemed to kind of calm things down for the Redbirds a little bit. They get their goal after that goaltending change. Now, whether that had an ultimate effect on it or not, who's to say? But a lot of the chances for Maryville came when Shadle was still in between the pipes. Really only a couple of shots in on goal once they put in Lindsay. Yeah, and Shadle, good night, Irene, I like to say. Shadle, even though he was pulled, he was playing some great, great hockey between the pipes for Illinois State, making those great glove saves, some stretch passes. Like we said, he's not a very tall guy, but he's making himself big as he was making them great saves. And, yeah, like you said, the, the goaltender that they put in, uh, not, not too many chances. Uh, he's had to make a few saves, but still, uh, Maryville, when a, when a cold goaltender comes in, you want to get the shots on. So um, still got to do it, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in this third. Like I said, a two-goal game. Uh, it's, not, it's not a promising lead. Now obviously, Maryville's going to have to have a similar defensive effort to what we saw in the second period. Stalkup made some good saves in the second, but uh, Illinois State limited to just seven second period shots. So, I mean, Maryville's going to have to continue that in the third period if they want to hang on. Yeah, uh, keep that, keep the shots down. Uh, Scott Stalkup's been playing a great game. Uh, that last goal that was scored by Illinois State was a roofer, was a great shot. So, uh, yeah, keep the shots off of Scout. And it, it, it's almost like a uh, like a program, uh, you know, mentality is to block shots. You know, we see D1 do it. We see the women's do it. We've seen D2 do it. So, uh, block the shots. Keep the shots off Scout. And then uh, get the shots on, uh, pronounce it for me, Lenchy? I, I said Lenchy. So yeah, Lenchy. I'm so, sure somebody in the comment section will let us know. Yeah, Lenz, Lenchy. <laughs> sounds good to me. So we got to get, Maryville's got to keep shots on him and, uh, you know, kind of test him out early in this period. Well, let's take an opportunity to take a look at the goals that happened. Uh, nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we, got a, we, we got a quick kibosh to that, so... <laughs> We'll just uh, head off into another little break and we'll come back and we'll drop the puck on the third period of play. The score <laughs> is four to nothing in favor of Maryville as they take on the Illinois State Redbirds right here at the MACHA Conference Tournament. stopped was the day we found where to go mm. 
lucha, lucha, nos vas a ver el octavo, así que... Lost together. We discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. The CCM One Piece boot. The CCM One Piece boot. If I had these in my day, I could have been Connor McDavid. I could have been Connor McDavid. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Helps make your feet faster, gives you a closer fit. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Looking sharp, bud. Good thing you got that one piece boot, you duster. In today's sports world, high quality video and accurate data are key elements for improving team results, player development, and fan engagement. Pixelot, the world's leading AI automated sports production company, provides an end to end video and data solution for fans, players, and coaches. Pixelot systems are installed around the world and produce thousands of live matches every day with customized live graphics, ads, color replay. commentary, oh, no. and play-by-play. -play. At the end of the game, our AI generates highlight reels 100% automatically. Analysts and the coaching staff get video breakdowns and stats from VidSwap, Pixelot's video analysis platform. Each game captured is automatically broken down by sports professionals on a video editing platform for in-depth analysis. The real-time game breakdowns from live video and official data include shot charts, heat maps, and detailed game, team, and player stats. The platform offers a variety of editing and self-coding tools so you can easily review plays and coach your team better both during and after the game. This all-in-one cost-effective solution also allows you to telestrate, tag, and add notes to each move, and watch your upcoming opponent's matches on the video exchange platform. Pixelot produces and analyzes thousands of games every single day from over 130 leagues and tournaments around the globe. Join the AI revolution in sports. There's power in numbers. Number ones will cook you with that first step. Your L, sir. Compliments of the chef. Number tens, more gold than Midas. Midas who? Twenty fours will live in your head. I'm home. Thirty-threes put in so many hours, they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, thirty-three? Thumbs up, old man. Run it back. I said run it back. Fifties. Ice in their veins. And eighty-sevens are so good, just set up shop in the end zone. Next. There's power in numbers. Take yours. Power aid. More power for zero to 99, more power for me. Welcome back. And we are underway here in the third period with the score four to two. I apologize. Apparently, I butchered the score a couple times during the intermission. And yeah. 
think I said four to one and then four to nothing. So don't <laughs> want to be taking Illinois State's goals away from them as they uh, earned them on the power play attacks. Two power play goals. They are two for three. Nothing yet. Even strength. But they come out here in the first minute of the third period and earn an icing call against Maryville. Putting on some early pressure here against the Saints. Yeah, so the faceoff's going to go back to center, I guess. Uh, well, I'm not sure why. They call the nice, but... I guess they're saying they must have hit off of somebody. It's the only thing I can think. Shot's still pretty even. It is 23-22. to 22. Still in favor of Maryville as we get another whistle here. Faceoff will come just outside the Maryville line. Sometimes difficult to tell where you need to look for the officials at the D2 level because they oftentimes go with the two referee, one linesman system. Yeah, as they are tonight. <laughs> Gilbert just flings it over to the far side. Late check thrown by Lewis just in time before the referees were going to call a penalty. Puck deflects out of play as we get another stoppage. Haven't even played a full minute yet. Yeah, and we've been here for 28 minutes, so it's crazy. <laughs> Rapkin goes against Keller on the faceoff dot. Saints come out the better of that one. Tic-tac-toe they go along the defensive side. Off the heel of Keller. And Just will send it in. Keller tracks it down, but Gilbert got there first. Barrett was spun around as the Redbirds get it out to center. Saints try to return the favor and flip it back towards the attacking blue line. Aravolta got it into the attacking zone, but Redbirds were more concerned with trying to get a line change completed as they needed to get one more man off. Keller tried to put it out in front, hit the back of the net instead. Redbirds get it up to Young. He crosses the attacking lines, drops it off. The shot Ooh. in, blocker save made. Barrett was denied as he had some steam behind the wrister, but it went off the waffle board. Yeah, he sure did. Scout stock up just right there in front of him. It was all squared up. And like you said, off the blocker into the netting. Fresh legs out there for the Redbirds as they win the faceoff. They tap it past Barlow off the side of the net. Saints come up with the puck. After all that, Barlow off the glass too high for Juliuson. Brought down by Lothar. Saints almost intercept. Now Juliuson spikes one up and that will ultimately end up out of play. Almost over near the MACHA banner over there. Would you look at that? What are the coincidence of that, Todd? <laughs> not not to sure what that means, but yeah, it is it, what it is. It means something. <laughs> Remember, the winner of this game gets to face Iowa State tomorrow. In a difficult match, Iowa State we saw a couple weeks ago, and they're a great team, they're a big team, and they know how to score. So it's always interesting to see how these conference tournaments work out, regardless of the sport, especially if you have a team coming in with a bye. As then, oh, that always brings up the question of whether the bye is a good thing or not. McKellen left it. Carcerano. Trasca got it. While the blue line, Barlow and Juliuson were able to pilfer it away. Saints bring it back in their own zone. Looking for Verdu. Couple tap passes. Knocked it around. Red Rivers back in their own zone with just over three minutes played here in the third period. Knocked out of midair by Lewis. Brought down by Lane. And he wears the jersey of the Saints. Over the blue line. Feltz put it right back in even though his teammate was offside. Everybody's touched up now. Camilleri left it back for his defender. Slap shot in and a glove save made by Lindsay. 
I like those bright red pads that Lindsay, the goaltender for Redbirds, are wearing down there. Matching leg pads, blocker, glove, helmet. Looks nice. Saints looking for the deflection in front as Lane was there. Tied up in the corner. Lane comes out with it. Keeps it away from Camilleri. Going He's going to draw a power play as they're going to get Camilleri for a slash, I would have to guess. Another glove save made as that one ricochets off the end wall. And nice. now they're going to say a high stick. Yes, sir. Regardless, the Saints will go on the power play attack again. They are 0 for 4 thus far. Hard to imagine scoring four goals and having four power play attacks and coming up empty on all of those. Yeah, I mean, those are the, the, <laughs> that's really where you have to capitalize. So, uh, yeah, they've got to, if, if Maryville's going to keep continuing to get power plays, they've probably got to think about capitalizing on them here somewhere. One forty-five left in the penalty to Camilleri. Another one. So they're going to get another get a trip. penalty. Nope. Tripping is going to be the call. The Illinois State fans starting to get a little bit frustrated. Yeah, they are. And uh, at least for a minute 39, their Saints are going to have a five on three here. So we'll see what happens. you got to figure Maryville needs to score on this one. I mean, if Illinois State's going to be taking this many penalties, eventually you have to make your opponent pay. They go with some good passing, but the Saints' shot ends up deflected. Another chance from Verdu over on the far side. Held in along by Turner. He skates up. Verdu with a one-timer. That's knocked down as Kelly spins around. Saints work it down low, back to the circle. Turner straight away to the high slot, to the right circle, and then the shot was blocked again by Kelly. Kept alive by Verdu. And now this is going to lead to a two-on-one. We saw this in the last power play for Maryville. Now here comes Shadel. He oh. is stopped. Stalkup flashes out the left elbow Boy. on another shorthanded break. A two-on-one when you're on a five-on-three. I mean, that's just unheard of. And they've still got one person, one, one forward, for checking when they only have three guys out there. Now here comes Bracco, taking on three defenders. Drives into the corner, filters it over to the far corner. Back to Feltz. Now he gives and goes. Feltz dusts it off again. He waits. They go down low. Back out top. Now here's Feltz on the right circle. He scores! Power play goal, and it is a five on three tally. The Saints now lead five to two. Some great passing back and forth. There's a screen in front of the Redbirds goaltender, and Feltz is almost to the hash marks where he shoots and scores, making it a 5-2 game. And like you said, Todd, Maryville's still gonna have 30 second power play since that goal by Feltz was scored during the time of that first penalty. There was nine seconds left on the penalty to Camilleri when Feltz scored. The goal comes at 543 on the power play. First power play goal of the game for Maryville. That makes them one for five. They've got 15 seconds left to score before that becomes one for six. They drag it back from the corner and set somebody up on the far uh -oh. wards. And here's another breakaway opportunity. Camilleri from the right wing takes the wrister. Glove saves Stalkup. And the time comes off the board. In Illinois State, they're even. But yeah, I mean, these, uh, these odd man rushes that Illinois State are generating when they're short is crazy. And, and it, it's... Almost like we've seen this past season for Maryville, Todd. Illinois has been looking really good on the penalty kill, better than even strength. Yeah, the Saints extremely lucky. They have given up 
Three grade A scoring opportunities. Oh! Barlow barrels into the net as he was taken out on the way through. He collides with Lency. Lency is shaken up as you are going to be, especially when you're tall like that. Yeah. A lot more leg area to take out from underneath you. Big trees haul fall harder. Haul farter. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Man, he, Barlow was, had speed, and he was just drilled into the Redbirds goaltender. Boy, oh boy. That's but, a scary collision. And what I, what I like to see about that is a lot of times you'll see after a play like that, they, they all pile on top of the, the forward as you're sticking up for your goaltender. There was no way that Barlow had any intention of doing that. No, he was driven yeah. into the goaltender. So the Illinois State players did the right thing by not really reacting because all you're going to do is bring the referee into it and then you end up shorthanded again. Yeah. So a smart play by the Redbirds is they really need to stay five on five or, or maybe even get a power play of their own to try to get back in this one, trailing by three. Gilbert kicks it, skate to stick, try to cross the blue line, finds a nice pass, and then hitting a rut there was Carcerano. And now Stalkup, he's caught up with one of the Redbird players. That was Castino. Castino a little bit slow to get up. Now he's coming back, calling for the stretch pass as he's cherry picking up by the blue line. Yeah, everyone on the ice thought it was going to be an icing call, and then Stripes waved it off. Gilbert with the long stride, stick handles around one, and then gave it away. St. Tavit, cross ice pass over to the reach of Sabatino, and that's saying something as he's one of the taller players on the ice. Simon Selly intercepts, drop pass for Juliuson. He puts one towards goal and a blocker save. They drop it on. Here comes Bearhunt. The other way. He finds Young and they score. Quick counterattack for the Illinois State Redbirds. They go right to left, right on the tape of Young, and he makes it a two goal game again. Yeah, two on one for the Redbirds. Young breaking in. One timer as he was wide open in front of the net and was able to sneak it past Scout Style Cup, making it a 5 3 game. 12-11 left in the third period. 5-3, the Saints are up. And the shots are all even at 28. So Illinois State, they're not going anywhere, Todd. We've said that time and time again throughout this game. So the Saints, it seems like every time they feel like they get themselves some uh, breathing room, then the Redbirds come right back at them. Goal comes at 7.49 of the period. Cuts it back to a two-goal lead. Flynn runs into three Maryville players. Erkmeyer finds Just. Keller's in the middle. Just has to put it off the end wall. Keller will chase it down along the far side. Tried to return the favor. Instead, it's jabbed away by the defense. Kicked at by the defense as well. Not cleared out. Long shot in, a little bit of a bouncer there, gloved down by Lindsey. And we'll have a face-off inside the Illinois State zone. So, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't seen Jim Hunter on the ice in this third period for the Maryville Saints. Not to my recollection, but again... I, I, I say it tongue-in-cheek a lot of times, but really the jerseys are hard to read. <laughs> but I don't remember seeing him out there, now. Here is Kemmer. He gives it over to Feltz, and now they give it away. Good back check from Kemmer. Lane was spun around. Shadle took him down. Arcerano looking up ice. Stead drops it for Kelly. He comes over here off the near wall to Castino. Gridley's back in his own zone. Saints struggling to get it out. Now they give it away. There's Carcerano to Castino and a good back check by Feltz as he took out the man with a clean hit. Here's Hafner. Backhander in front. Oh. And it went off a skate. So kind of split both options that the Saints would have had. Redbirds on the attack. Here's Shadle. He goes across the ice. 
Stick save, pad save. Saints still up by two. There's Hunter. Long shot in, that was knocked down in front. Saints trying to counterattack. A little bit of a seam up the left side. Wrist shot saved by Lency. Saints collect the rebound and there's a penalty upcoming. There's a man down as well. So after the puck was gone, it was a little bit of a shove there. Put the man into the wall. The trainer out to see to the fall in Maryville Saint. Maryville has had their share of injuries throughout this season. Obviously, like most teams throughout the country, lost a good bit of manpower games to uh, COVID protocols, but having their share of injuries as well. We talked about Berkemeyer. And that's Troy Hapner who was uh, slow to get up, but was able to skate by himself over to the bench. So that's a good sign. Even though he's walking off, hopefully it's just kind of check him out a little bit. Yeah, not going to the locker room, just a little bit of an area over there to the side of the bench. Now, Will Kelly is in the sin bin for the Illinois State Redbirds. So this will be the seventh power Jeez. play for Maryville. And again, don't mean to keep harping on it, but it bears repeating when you've got five goals and only one of them has come on the power play. Mm -hmm. you, you just kind of imagine what this score line could be if you had cashed in on like a handful of those. Maryville will try to increase their lead back to three. It's five to three right now on the power play for the seventh time. They're one for six. They drag it back into the corner. Exchange corners and then the pass out towards the point was knocked down as Rapkin got a piece of it. Turner back at his own end. 125 to go in the power play as the Saints come up through the middle. 9.15 left to go in the period. Barlow from the far wing. Saints were offside by about a mile. Yes, they were. Ace-off will come just outside of the Illinois state line. Feltz. To Kemmer. He skates up to the red line. Now Lane in on the attack. Drops it off. Feltz dusts it off. And again, those long passes through the zone, just not really what the Saints need right now. Good defending, though, by the Redbirds, as they've seen some of these passes telegraphed and gotten a stick in front. Feltz to the far wing. Kemmer entered the zone, rimmed it around. Bracco from the near side half wall. To the point for Feltz, Kemmer. Bracco dusts it off, one time too many. Bracco again, drags it along the wall, and then pass back for Feltz, and that's gonna spring another counterattack. Stalk up his way out of his net, and he gets <laughs> it up to center ice. He'd had enough of that <laughs> with all the shorthanded breaks. And the Maryville fans give him a round of applause for it. <laughs> Here's Sabatino. He thrusts one into the corner. Saints don't connect on the pass, though. Nicely held in. A shot in. Left pad save. Rebound oh. put wide. Sabatino thought he had a power play goal. And instead missed. Falkup puts it right into the stick of a player, and now oh, that came out in front. Redbirds almost had it, five to four. We are back to five on five in terms of the manpower. Uh oh! And now we are going to get an Illinois State power play as Rapkin was taken down. I believe interference was the call. So 
Illinois State will get their fourth power play of the game. Two of their three goals have come on the man advantage. Kemmer into the box. Interference was the call. Kelly gets the puck off the faceoff. Hands it off to Carcerano. He skates back. Kelly from the far point looking across the ice to Castino. In the corner. Hunter was tied up to the side of the goal on the near wing. McKellen brings it back outside the circle. Now to the point. Keller with a wrister. Oh. That net was empty, and unfortunately for Illinois State, it went off a skate away from Carcerano. McKellen to Kelly. Far point. Near side, Carcerano. It went off the heel of his stick. Shadle keeps it alive. 40 seconds gone in the power play. Vitt is tied up. Saints just trying to kill some time off of this clock as they have not had any kind of clear opportunity to get it away. Shadle walks the line, far side now. Carcerano, rink wide pass, looking for Kelly and the stick was in front, into the mixer and they got it away. Shadle from the blue line. Intending it for McKellen. That's going to allow Vitt to get to the puck. He is smushed against the glass. Kelly drags it back. Hands it off. Carcerano filters it through. McKellen. Out top. Kelly. He is blocked. And the puck went out of play. A bit of a slow whistle there. I thought it might have even stayed in. 33 seconds left in the penalty to Kemmer. 6.06 remaining here in the period in a two-goal game. Yeah, this remaining 33 seconds, Illinois State's really got to try to get one here if they want any chance at coming back. Digging in is Nate Radke. He's got one of the two goals. He drags it into the corner. Goes to the far circle. Gilbert with a shot. That one was wide. They have gone off the glove of the goaltender. Gilbert straight away. Another wrister stick save made by Stalkup. He continues to keep his team in the lead. Here's Young. Back towards the blue line and a mishandled pass. It was hard to get for Radke. They're back to even strength. Gilbert to Young on the near boards. Under five and a half to go. Young trying to avoid the lifted stick from Juliuson. Young comes on as he outraced mm. everybody, put it through the crease. Radke holds the blue line, gets it down low into the corner. A jousting match. Sabatino up to Juliuson. He sees ice in front. He'll take it. He takes on four defenders all the way down into the corner and peels back. Off the boards, Feltz with a wrister. That one took a deflection on the way through into the near side. Hammer shot from <laughs> Hunter. And that one hit Simon Selly up high. Tapped out by Barrett as he headed off on a change. Saints trying to catch them in the change, but a late stick kept it away from Simon Selly. He sends it over to the far wing. Bad angle chance from Juliuson. Yeah, good Almost idea. fooled the goaltender. <laughs> Had to force a good glove save by Lindsay. You never know when those will squeak in, catch the goalie off guard, catch him cheating off that close post. 4.26 to go here, third period. Redbirds come up with the faceoff. Berkmeyer almost threw the body check, but saw the puck was gone, so pulled off. McKellen trying to get there before Feltz does not. Advantageous hop for Maryville as that one escaped the zone. Just comes on the back check, takes Carcerano out of play. Here's Berkmeyer. He's in by himself. He'll take a wrister off the blocker. The puck is in behind. And a stick from the goaltender was able to knock it away. Or excuse me, the defender. A little pop pass over into the corner. Off the side of the goal, Berkmeyer trying to chase it down along the near wing. McKellen is in there. Drop pass to Feltz. Slap shot. Fanned on it. Oh. It still got in front and forced a pad save. 
Feltz drags it around. Carcerano serves it in behind the net to Keller. He's on his off wing as he had it dispossessed. And this will clear the zone. 3.20 to go. Desperation time now for Illinois State. Lobbed up by Traska. Flynn put it into the zone. Radke lost control of it. Berkmeyer will clear. Sabatino putting on the pressure. They pass around him. Keep an eye on the goaltender. Two goal game, you have to figure he could be leaving at any moment as this one goes off the protective netting. So we'll get a face off with 2.48 to go here, third period. Yeah, you got to watch these offensive zone faceoffs for Illinois State Redbirds, like you said, Todd. At any minute now, the goaltender could come off as the Redbirds take a uh, take a timeout. So you never know because uh, what do you got to lose? You don't have to go. You're not going against the standings. You're not going against goals against. This is do or die. So uh, pulling the goalie is, is probably an option that they're going to go for. Maybe not quite yet, but uh, when they gain some possession within the Maryville zone. I would expect for a six skater to come out. And yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to say. They'll probably have Lency come up near the hash marks, maybe the top of the circles, although he's over there by the door. He's going into the bench right now. Yeah. So they might be pulling him right now, yeah. even if they don't win the faceoff. Yeah, because he closes the door behind him. So, yeah, he's going off. He takes a seat. <laughs> Hey, can't blame him. I always said I like taking a seat, too. So, I mean, I, I fully understand the decision. It's it's a bit of a gamble because if you lose the faceoff, then all of a sudden Maryville gets to charge down, look for an empty net. But given the fact that you're down by two, I also understand the thought process as well. Yeah. Important faceoff here, both teams. Illinois wants to get possession. Saints want to clear it. Good win. Now Radke takes the wrister. That ends up wide. Might have hit a skate on the way through. Juliuson takes a swipe at it, but kept in there by Castino. Saints with it. They Selly. send it down the middle, and they'll miss. Looked like it had an angle initially, but it just kept floating off to the right. 2.33 left to go. Simon Selly going for that empty net goal, but he was just about at his uh, goal line, so... Referee didn't like the position of uh, somebody. I believe it was Rabkin who ends up with the puck and pinched in to get it as well. So here's Shadle down to the corner. Ooh, centering pass. They were looking for Rabke. Rabkin. Now on to Carcerano. Back for Rabkin. Two Redbirds run into each other. Rabkin comes out with it. Carcerano was tied up. Rabkin with a little bit of space. Trying to get a backhand chance off the blocker. The puck is covered. At least long enough to gain the whistle. Yeah. 2.04 to go here in the third. So Illinois State, they're doing a good job at uh, keeping the pressure on, keeping possession within Maryville zone. They just haven't had too many opportunities to get the puck on net. Another face-off win. Radke keeps it alive. He punches it down into the corner, looking for Camilleri. Young left it. Gilbert with a shot. That goes wide. Kept alive by Radke at the point. Lewis in the corner. Radke again, close to the blue line. Shouts wide. And then they jab the rebound loose on the far side. Just had his stick lifted. Gilbert holds it at the blue line. One-timer for Radke. Similar to how he scored their first goal, but this time he puts it wide on the near side. 90 seconds left. Gilbert from the blue line to the outside of the circle and out of the slot. Shoot, save made. Rebound chance, and there's too many bodies. Young to the corner. Camilleri back to Young. He shoots and a block shot. Radke below the goal line. Braun. Tap passes, and the Saints will clear. Perfect clearance by the Saints. Not far enough for icing. Almost intercepted on the way through the middle. Here's Hafner. Or check that, it's Julius. And he goes up to oh. that and he misses. 
I thought that was going, Todd. Boy. That would have been a highlight reel empty netter, the yeah. way that he curled that one back <laughs> against his body. 54.6 seconds left. A date with Iowa State tomorrow on the line. Castino wins another faceoff. Kelly on the stick. Low shot. Save made. Loose along the side of the net. And Stall Cup will cover. Yeah, kind of snuck out. Hit Scout right in the midsection. And was able to sneak out the right side along the side of the goal. But his defenders helped him out. Another faceoff win for Illinois State. They've given themselves plenty of chances with these faceoff wins. They'll have another opportunity as the Saints ice it. That one wasn't even close to the goal. Jens just keeps shooting it. <laughs> I guess they say shoot or shoot. 40.1 seconds left. All this late game action has put the shot totals back in the favor of the Redbirds as we get a late whistle. The official didn't like how that faceoff was taken. Every time you say that an official didn't like it, in my head I hear, I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> the ref saying that. I don't know why, Todd. <laughs> I, not in this game, but we've seen some officials that probably had that mentality. <laughs> Maryville will tie it up in the corner. 35 seconds left. Redbirds come out of the scrum with the puck, but they play it off the back of the goal. Berkmeyer off the wall, almost gloved down by Juliuson. Shadel puts it over the goal. 25 seconds left. Radkin puts it down low, into the corner. Carcerano looking for Shadle, and that one was dug out by the Saints defense. Kept alive by Kelly. He'll spike one in down low. Too hot to handle for Carcerano. Eight seconds left. Shadle into the middle. Saints can't clear. Kelly puts it across. That one's wide. One second left, and the Saints will win. Five to three. And as you said, a date with Iowa State is waiting. And Maryville will take their invitation tomorrow here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Five to three, Maryville Saints beat Illinois State Redbirds. And they will move on. So a heck of an offensive game, just about what you'd expect from a team they combined for over 250 goals. But ultimately, the Maryville Saints came out a little more prepared here this afternoon as the game went into the evening, and they have won by two goals. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll give you our Hogan Trucking postgame wrap-up right here at the MACHA Conference Tournament. trucking post game wrap up on game number two of this MACHA conference tournament matchup you see the final score there on your screen the Maryville Saints defeat the Illinois State Redbirds by a final of five to three and really Maryville came out with a game plan here today they implemented it Illinois State had their chances but Maryville just seemed just a slight bit better throughout the game and those, the score line ends up as it does. Yeah, it seemed like Maryville was connecting a little more, uh, was established a little better than Illinois State, at least for tonight. Uh, and they were able to get the 5-3 win. Um, 
It, it wasn't because of power plays. You know, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't anything crazy that Maryville was doing that. Uh, that uh, you know, we really noticed against the Redbirds. They just uh, had that upper hand. So Maryville comes out. We talked in the pregame about Illinois State doesn't have one guy you could key on. Twenty-three different goal scorers. Maryville kind of took a page out of the Redbirds book. Five different goal scorers with Juliuson just. Bracco, Sabatino, and Feltz getting the goals here tonight. Yeah, and that's exactly what you got to do. That's exactly how you got to play if you want to uh, continue going further, Todd. Uh, uh, it's always uh, a little bit easier when you can you can uh, focus on that Ovechkin, right? You can focus on that Sidney Crosby. No, they got five different guys scoring. You never know what's going to happen. So uh, good on them for for uh, you know taking the page out of uh, Illinois State's book, like you said, and uh, spreading the wealth, as they would say. Now the Redbirds obviously put the pressure on in the third period. They come out with 17 shots on goal, the most out of any period that they had. But Stout, uh, excuse me, Scout Stalkup was up to the task, and it was a really good rebound game for him because as we saw towards the end of the season, not necessarily his fault, but just due to the play in front of him and a couple goals here or there that he might like back. It wasn't the end of the season that he would have liked, but he rebounds here tonight and it's a big reason why the Saints are going to play tomorrow. Yeah, a little bit of redemption for Scout, as I'm sure he wasn't too happy with that play at the end of the season. But uh, uh, I I was able to talk to Scout's father between periods, and I said, boy, if this is Scout's last game here at Maryville, he's sure leaving it out on the ice. You know, and uh, his dad kind of laughed and agreed, and, you know, he he played a great game, and you're right. Uh, Scout Stalkup's play uh, in between the pipes was a big reason Maryville came out with the W. So due to that, Scout... I'll it's a there. tongue twister. It yeah. really is. <laughs> so Scout Stalkup will have a chance for redemption as they will face Iowa State. I'm all, also, I'm all over the place you now. You almost said a bad word. Uh, no, <laughs> I didn't even come close to that. But, but they will play Iowa State come tomorrow, so he will have a chance for redemption, as will Maryville, as they will seek to uh, reverse uh, a rather lopsided score that we saw towards the end of the regular season against Iowa State. But... Regardless of who won this game, whether it was Illinois State or Maryville, they were going to face a tough opponent tomorrow because, as you mentioned, we've seen Iowa State play. They're big, they're fast, they connect on a lot of their passes, and they like to spring some of those stretch passes as well. So whoever won this game, obviously here tonight it is Maryville, but they're going to have to rest the legs because they need to be ready tomorrow. I was going to say, these guys need to shower up. Uh, Yeah, they need to, you know, give high fives and and celebrate the win, but uh, leave the hockey rink, go home, have a nice little meal, go to bed, rest up, because like you said, Iowa State, great hockey team, uh, big hockey team, fast hockey team, and it's going to be a tough competition for Maryville tomorrow. So tomorrow it'll be the semifinals here at the MACHA Conference Tournament. We hope you'll tune in. It'll be the Bradley Braves against the Iowa Cyclone the Iowa Hawkeyes and it'll be the Maryville Saints against the Iowa State Cyclones come tomorrow. That's easy Tune for you in. to say Todd. What? Yeah. <laughs> hey you call everybody Iowa regardless of where they're from. Yeah. So I, they're from <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> That'll wrap it up for our broadcast here tonight. We thank Eric Skelton for making us look good behind the scenes. He's Chuck Krause. I'm Todd Panula. Until the next time, good night everyone. <laughs>